guys, happy Friday. I hope your quiz was all right. Um, moving on now to section 30 and 31, the 10 plagues, all right? The 10 plagues and um, the 10th plague being the Passover, all right? So let's get right to it. You can take out your uh, notes, switch screen your um, the iBook for me, all right? Get that open and ready to go. All right, so here we left off. Yesterday, you remember, we just had finished talking about Pharaoh being before the... Um, Moses and Aaron being before Pharaoh, demanding to let their people go out into the wilderness to pray before God, right? Pharaoh's refusing. The last thing we saw was that um, Aaron threw the his staff on the ground. It became a snake, right? All that stuff we talked about yesterday. So now we're coming up to uh, section 30 here. This is Exodus chapter 7, all right, verse 14. So let's pick it up right here. So, then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh is obstinate, stubborn, in refusing to let the people go. In the morning, just when he sets out for the water, uh, go to Pharaoh and present yourself by the bank of the Nile, holding in your hand the staff which had turned into a snake. Say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me, with you, sent me to you with this message. Let my people go to serve me in the wilderness. But as yet you have not listened, thus says the Lord, This is how you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff here in my hand, I will strike the water in the Nile, and it will be changed into blood. All right, pretty gross, all right, pretty gross. He's promising that all the water in the Nile River is going to turn into blood. The longest river in Egypt, right? The Nile River, the longest river in the whole world, Nile River, all right? Do me a favor, right now click on Did You Know Up Top? Did You Know Up Top? So now the ten plagues, guys, are going to be divided. We're going to maybe think of them as nine plus one, all right? It's going to, in the nine, the, it's going to be a, a pattern of three sets of three. The first two plagues in each set of three is going to be with a warning. Moses is going to appear to Pharaoh, just like he just did with the first one, and say, hey, let me go, let us go, and uh, if not, here's what's going to happen. So we're going to see that with uh, plagues one and two, four and five, seven and eight, right? So um, we're going to see that. Keep that in mind as we keep going. So, let's take a look. In um, getting now to verse uh, to the first plague, right? The the plague is predicted. He goes um, he goes to Nile. He goes to the Nile, right? Then the Lord said to Moses, "Speak to Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, its streams, its canals, its ponds, and all its supplies of water, that they will become blood." There will be blood throughout the land, even in the wooden pails and stone jars. So they did exactly what had happened, right? Verse 21. The fish died, the Nile itself stank so that the Egypts could not drink the water from it. There was blood throughout the land. All right, now imagine being an Egyptian, all right? Imagine being an Egyptian and seeing this, all right? The blood, all right, imagine taking a shower in the morning, turn the, turn the faucet on, and there's blood coming out of the, the faucet, right? That's horrifying, right? Now... We're going to see over and over again these Egyptian magicians. That's verse 22. The Egyptian magicians did the same by their magic arts, meaning that they were able to turn some water, make it look like blood or something, right? Some kind of trick. They're magicians. They're some kind of um, optical illusion, right? And so they do this, and Pharaoh finds an excuse. No, I'm not going to listen. What is Pharaoh afraid of? He doesn't want to lose his... It's all about money. He doesn't want to lose his free slave labor, right? So he's refusing to let them go, all right? Now, the first, the first plague I just want to take a look at is going to be, make a note here. You see the note right here? Click on that, or, you know, make a note there. And the first plague is a really a beautiful type, if you think about it. Can you think of anything that gets changed into blood? Hello, hello. Anything that changes into blood? The Eucharist, right? This is going to be a type of the Eucharist, where something that is not blood is changed into blood by a miracle, right? It's also a foreshadowing of another very famous event in the New Testament, Jesus' very first miracle. Anybody know? Anybody know? It's called the wedding feast at... Anybody? Anybody? Cana. The wedding feast at Cana. And what does Jesus do? Mary tells him, hey, they have no wine. The bride and the groom, they have no more wine left. And Jesus has them fill up the jars with water, and miraculously it turns into wine, right? That's where we hear that beautiful line, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever Jesus tells you. All right, so the first plague happens, Pharaoh changes his mind, nope, right? So um, so we're on to the next plague, all right? Second plague, the frogs. All right, frogs are gross, all right? Frogs are gross. I'm not a, not a fan of this one. Let's take a look. So seven days passed the Lord, after the Lord had struck the Nile. Seven, seven, biblical number, what is it about? Completion, right? 
Then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him, thus says the Lord, let my people go to serve me. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs over your territory. The Nile will team with frogs. They will come up and enter your palace, into your bedroom, and onto your bed, into the house of your servants too, among the people, even your own cities, even your own ovens and kneading bowls. The frogs will come over you and be on all your servants. Ew. All right, definitely ew. Now again, we're seeing the pattern there. Plague number two gets um, gets a prediction, gets a prediction, a warning. Moses goes to Pharaoh and says, "Do this, or else." And um, here we're seeing with the verse with the with the frog moving over to chapter eight. Right. So the frogs come. He stretches out. Aaron stretches out his staff over the waters. The frogs come up, cover the whole land. But hey, the Egyptians did the same thing. Now let's talk about those Egyptian, the magicians, the Egyptian magicians. They did the same by their magic arts, and frogs overran the land of Egypt, right? So why are the magicians, the powerful people, all the court officials, trying to get Pharaoh to not release the slaves? Hey, they want their free labor too. They're all in on it, right? The powerful people are all against the slaves, all against the poor. Sound familiar? Sound familiar? Maybe in our own lives, think of all the powerful people um, who, who use their power incorrectly, right? often, very often, at the expense of the poor, all right? So now, uh, verse 4, Pharaoh said to uh, summon Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord to remove the frogs and from me and my people, and I will let you go sacrifice. Liar. Moses said to Pharaoh, Please designate the time for me when I am to pray for you and your servants and your people to get rid of the frogs from you and your house. They will o- they will only be left in the Nile. They're all right, deal. I'll pray. Tell me when. Tomorrow, Pharaoh said. Then Moses replied, it will be as you have said, so that you may know that there is no Lord like our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your servants and your people, and they will be left only in the Nile. Guys, what is going to be the point of each of the of the plagues? We've already seen two of them so far. It's going to be to prove that there is only one God. Only one God, the God of um, Jacob, Isaac, Abraham, right? Our Christian God. There's only one. All the other gods are fake. What's the most important? That there is only one God. That he says that you may know that there is only one God and that he has the power to save and to deliver, right? Now, you guys know this. The Egyptians had hundreds and hundreds of gods, right? But we're going to see in just a few minutes, each of the plagues is going to be disproving one of the Egyptian gods. It's scratching them off. Nope, that's not a real God. That's not a real God. That's not a real God. Who claimed to be a god? Who claimed to be a god? Pharaoh. We're going to see that in just a second. All right. So now let's take a look. So Moses left his presence, right? They He prayed. All the frogs died and they were left in pile of frog carcasses everywhere. Gross. The land stank, right? But verse 11, when Pharaoh saw there was a respite, when he saw that it was over, he became obstinate. He became stubborn. Nope. And would not listen to them. Just as the Lord had said that, they, that Pharaoh would not listen. All right, plague number three comes along, the gnats, right? He says, all right, stretch out your hand, and also that all the dust of the earth turns into turns into gnats. They did so. No warning this time. Aaron stretched out his hand. All the dust turned into gnats, right? Now, look, this is interesting this time, verse 14. Though the magicians tried to do the same to produce by their magic arts, they could not do so, right? So the, uh, the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God, yet... Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not listen to them. The people are starting to catch on. Catch on. Something's not right, right? God is doing this. I'm starting to get nervous. Pharaoh, maybe you should think about letting him go. Pharaoh's like, nah. Verse five, uh, fourth plague, the flies. Could you imagine flies everywhere? Gross, all right? So now, the Lord said to Moses, early tomorrow morning, present yourself to Pharaoh. And uh, when he sets out to the water, right? And say to him, hey, thus says the Lord, let my people go to serve me. For if you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies upon you and your servants and your people and your houses. Oh, but this time, this time, uh, God gives a little extra twist to make sure I'm really the God of the Israelites. I'm the God of the Jewish people. Do it. And I'm going to show you how. The house of the Egyptians and the very ground on which they stand will be filled with swarms of flies. But on that day, I will make an exception for the land of Goshen, where my people are. No swarms of flies will be there, so that you may know that I am the Lord and am in the midst of the land. And I, right? And I make a distinction between my people and your people. This sign will take place tomorrow. All right. 
So now we're trying to see the God of Israel, the God of the Israelites, is going to be the real God, and he's going to protect his people, and everyone else is going to, going to be afflicted by these flies. What a great sign, right? All right, I'm telling you, let these people go, and they're going to be protected. So it happens, right? Everything in the house, I love this picture here. Look at this picture. Everything in the house is covered with flies, right? Gross. Now, verse 20, now Pharaoh's starting to sing a different song. Verse four, uh, the fourth plague. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God uh, in, within, within the land. All right, now remember, what was Moses asking for? Let my people go out into the wilderness, out of Egypt, to, to offer a sacrifice, to pray to God. Pharaoh comes back with a counter offer. All right, you can go and pray, take them, but you have to stay within Egypt. And Moses says, hey, it's not right for us to do. We can't do that in the land of the Egyptians, right? It's, we're, if we sacrifice what is abhorrent to the Egyptians before their very eyes, will they not stone us? He's worried that the Egyptians are going to be like, that's disgusting. You can't do that, right? You can't worship this God in our land. They want to kill him, right? They, or they will kill the Egyptians, uh, the Israelites. Bar, uh, verse 24, Pharaoh said, I will let you go sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, provided that you do not go too far away and pray for me. Moses answered, as soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, his servants, and his people. Pharaoh, however, must not act deceitfully again. He's not going to lie again and refuse to let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. When Moses left Pharaoh, he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord did as Moses asked, removing the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, his servants, and his people. Not one remained, but once more Pharaoh became obstinate and would not let the people go go. All right, guys, take a look here. Take a look here at our um, at our chart. So we've seen the first four plagues, right? We're about to get to the fifth plague, the death of the livestock, right? And we're seeing how each plague is going to be a rejection of one of the Egyptian deities, all right? So the first one was against Hopi, the god of the Nile, the flood, The then against the goddess depicted as a frog, the gnats against the um, the, the dust of the earth, ruled by the god Jeb. Flies, right? Another Egyptian god. Do you have to know all these gods? Do you have to know all these gods, which one gets disproved? No, but you do have to be able to recognize the plagues, all right? You do have to be able to, to name them and know them, all right? Which plagues they are, all right? So, so far we've had Nile into blood, frogs, gnats, flies. On to number five, the death of the livestock, all right? So, then Lord said to Moses, go, tell them, tell Pharaoh, this is five, five getting a warning here, right? Let my people go to serve me, for if you refuse to let them go and persist in holding them and not letting them go, the hand of the Lord will strike the livestock in the field, your horses, your donkeys, your herds, right? All of them, right? But the Lord will not strike the, the livestock of the Israelites, the livestock meaning the animals, right? Will not let the Israelites uh, suffer. The Lord set the time. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. The next day the Lord did it right there. All the livestock the Egyptians died, but not one of the animals belonging to the Israelites did. But although Pharaoh found upon inquiry, oh, verse 7, but although Pharaoh found upon inquiry, asking around, that not even so much as one of the livestock of the Israelites had died, he remained stubborn and would not let the people go. What's wrong with this guy? All right, we're coming up on our, our set here, number six, the end of our second set of three, the sixth plague, no warning, right? So the Lord said to Moses, take a handful of soot from a kiln. A kiln is like an oven. Throw it into the air, right? And it's going to cause uh, boils to fester over human beings and beasts alike throughout the land. It, that's gross. That is absolutely gross. Soil turning into the boils on your skin. Gross, right? So it happened, but the magicians could not stand. Oh, even the magicians, right, were like, nah, I, I can't do this one, right? Even they had the boils on them. But the Lord handed, hardened Pharaoh's heart. And he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said to Moses. All right. So now we're seeing in the first few plagues, Pharaoh's heart is the one that's hardened, right? He's choosing to sin, right? To not listen to God. Now we're seeing verse 12 tells us that the Lord Pharaoh hardened Pharaoh's heart. What does that mean? The Lord is, is allowing Pharaoh to, to make his, his decision, and he's letting him deal with the consequences. Guys, this is what sin does to us. Think about it. The more we choose to do a bad habit, to do things we shouldn't do, the easier it is to do those things, right? Maybe the first time you copied homework, not that you should be doing this, I'm not going to mention anyone third period, 
But the more you copy homework, right? It becomes the first time you're like, is he gonna catch me? Right? You're scared, right? I don't know, right? The second time, eh, it comes a little easier, but you're still kind of nervous, right? You still gotta like ask your friend, kind of schedule, like, hey, could you give me the homework, right? But after like the sixth, seventh time you copied homework, you're like, yo, here, send in the group me, everyone here, here's the homework, right? This is kind of what we're seeing, that pattern, that that sinful pattern in our hearts where at first we choose to sin over and over again and then God says, they're free to do that. They're free to use their will. God says, I don't want them to do that. I don't want them turning away from me in sin. But God allows us to do that and this is what's happening to Pharaoh. He's becoming more and more a sinner and it's becoming a lot easier for him to sin. All right, seventh plague, moving on. The hail, all right, the hail, right, gives him a warning, right? Hail's going to strike over the entire land of the Egyptians, right? But this will is why I have to, uh, right? He's trying to say that it's going to show my, God is saying it's going to show my power to make my name resound throughout the earth, right? God is proving that he is the real God, right? At this time tomorrow, I'm going to rain down such fierce hail as there has never been before in Egypt from day it was founded up until present. Therefore, order your livestock and whatever else is in the open fields to be brought to safety. Whatever human beings or animals in the field and, uh, and is not brought to shelter will die when the hail comes down upon them. Those of Pharaoh's servants who feared the word of the Lord hurried to their servants and their livestock to shelter. But those who did not pay attention to the word of the Lord left their servants and the livestock in the field. All right. So now even the Egyptians, these are, now God is willing to save even the Egyptians, right? The non-Israelites. He's saying, anyone, um, here's the warning. Everybody better bring their animals and all their servants, everything into the field, uh, out of the field into shelter or else it will die. Promise. Verse 22, the Lord said, all right, stretch out your hand to the sky, right? Boom. Everything starts um, falling the entire land of Egypt, human beings, beasts alike, everything, vegetation. So Moses stretched out his staff towards the sky right? Peals of thunder and hail, right? Loud thunder, loud hail, right? Lightning flashed on the earth, right? Look at this beautiful picture. It's pretty intense. Scary. All right? The rain and hail fell down upon Egypt. There was hail and lightning flashes there, right? The hail was so fierce that nothing had ever been seen before it. Only the land, so this, uh, everything is destroyed throughout the land. Uh, hail struck everything, the fields, human beings like it, struck all the vegetation in the field and splintered Every tree in the field, that's how bad it was, all right? The hail broke the trees. Only in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were, there was no hail. Then Pharaoh sent, to Moses, sent for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is the just one. The Lord is the real God. And I and my people are the ones at fault. Hey, verse 28, pray to the Lord. Enough thunder and hail. I will let you go. You need stay no longer. Not bad. Good deal. Moses replied, as soon as I leave the city, I will extend my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease. There'll be no more hail for you. Moses like, all right, deal. Right? Remember Moses, Moses' brothers with this Pharaoh. He, he knows him. But as for you and your servants, as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord. Moses knows his brother. I know that you don't really fear the Lord yet. You're just trying to do this to get the, the plague to end. Right? Flax and barley were ruined. Everything was ruined, right? So now the Egyptians are starting to suffer. There's not a lot of food. Things are getting pretty bad. Moses left Pharaoh, gone to the city, right? The, the, he ends the, the plague. Pharaoh, seeing that the rain and hail and the thunder had ceased, sinned again and became obstinate, both he and his servants. In the hardness of his heart, Pharaoh would not let the Israelites go. This after plague seven. All right. All right, on to the eighth plague, locusts. Absolutely disgusting, absolutely disgusting. Animals, uh, insects that just eat everything in sight. So let's see. Moses gives them a warning. Hey, I'm going to bring locusts into your territory. That's what God says. They'll eat the remnant. They'll, they'll eat everything that wasn't destroyed by the hail. They're going to eat it. All right, do you understand? So he left, right? Something that's not, let's see. They will fill your houses and your servants' houses, servants, all land of Egypt. This is the locust. Something your parents and your grandparents have not seen from the day they appear to the soil until today. Meaning it's going to be the worst you've ever seen. But Pharaoh said to him, Pharaoh's servant said to him, How long are we going to, to be, how long is he going to be a snare for us? Meaning, how long is this guy Moses going to be an issue? Hold on one second. Sorry, guys. There we are. 
How long is this going to be an issue, right? Let, let the people go and serve the Lord their God. This is verse 7. Do you not yet realize that Egypt is being destroyed? Now, Pharaoh's servants are like rebelling against Pharaoh and say, what do you, hello, the whole land is now being destroyed. And now locusts are going to come and eat all the rest of the food that we have. Pharaoh, stop this. Let them go. Pharaoh said to Moses and Aaron, go serve the Lord your God. But who exactly is going to go? Moses answered, with our young and old, we must go. With our sons and daughters, with our flocks and herds, we must go. It is the pilgrimage feast of the Lord for us, right? Everybody, all our animals, kids, adults, old people, everybody, take them out, right? The flocks, the sun, uh, our flocks, animals, all of them. It is a pilgrimage. It is a worship. It's, it's a spiritual event that's happening. Pharaoh says, the Lord help you. If I let your little ones go with you, clearly you have some evil in mind. By no means. Just the men can go and serve the Lord. After all, that's what you've been asking for. With that, they were driven from Pharaoh's presence. He kicked him out. Pharaoh says, no, just take the men. Why? Because he knows if the men leave, they'll come back with the women for the women and children. If he lets the women and children go, they ain't going to come. The Lord says, stretch out your hand. The locusts come, right? When it was morning, the east wind brought in the locusts. The locusts came from the whole land and settled in the territory. Never before had there been any such fierce swarms of locusts, nor will there ever be again. They covered the surface of the whole land so that it became black. They ate up all the vegetation in the land and all the fruit on the trees the hail had spared. Right, Whatever was left over from the hail, even that got eaten. Nothing green was left on any tree or plant in the field throughout the land of Egypt. That's a catastrophe, guys. That is an absolute catastrophe. There's no food left in Egypt because Pharaoh is being stubborn. Right, Bad leadership. Bad leadership. Pharaoh hardly saw Moses and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you, but now... Do forgive my sin only this once and pray to the Lord your God only to take this death from me, meaning take this these locusts from me. Moses left Pharaoh. He prayed the locusts end, right? Not a single locust remained. Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not let the Israelites go. All right. Now we're getting to the ninth plague. The ninth plague is going to disprove the most powerful Egyptian deity, Ra, the son of Ra being the, the sun god, the sun god. What is Pharaoh's name again during this time? Ramses, what does Ramses mean? Son of Ra, all right? Pharaoh himself claiming to be God, right? Claiming to be the son of Ra. Now we're seeing here, God is going to prove that Pharaoh is no match for him, that the most powerful Egyptian God is fake, that the sun, even God has the power over the sun. So let's take a look. The Lord said to Moses, the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards the sky, that over the land of Egypt there may be such darkness that one can feel it. So Moses stretched out his hand towards the sky, and there was dense darkness throughout the land for three days. Three, 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 three. Biblical number. You think I'm crazy. Biblical number, three days. People were people could not see one another, nor could they get up from where they were for three days. But all the Israelites had light where they lived. Three. Three. What's the it's biblical significance? What was the light of the world that was extinguished for three days? Jesus Christ, right? Third day of resurrection. Three days of darkness leading to light on the third day. Verse 24, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go serve the Lord. Only your flocks and herds will be detained. All right, all the people can go. Flocks and herds, animals, they stay behind. Even your little ones may go with you. Moses replied, You must also give us our sacrifices and burnt offerings to make to the Lord our God. Our livestock must also go with us. Not an animal must be left behind. For some of them we will select for service to the Lord, our God. But we will not know which ones who are to serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was unwilling to let them go. Pharaoh said to Moses, Leave me, and see to it that you do not see my face again. For the day you do see my face, you will die. Moses replied, You are right. I will never see your face again. So Pharaoh finally lets them go, lets, is a grease, let them go, but they have to take their animals. Moses says, no, we need our animals in order to sacrifice. We need to know which animals are going to have to offer up to God. We're going to see now, Moses, Moses predicts, you will never see my face again, Pharaoh. And it's true, he won't. So we're going to see that in a few seconds. But if you take a quick look on the plot thickens, all right? Number plot thickens, that's what I was saying before about the number three. We've seen the number three with the baker and the butler. We're seeing the ninth plague. Um, the three days of darkness, we see three sets of three plagues. Warning, warning, no warning, 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 no warning, 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 no warning for number nine. There was three, six, and nine, no warnings there, right? 
Jesus being the light of the world, third day of resurrection. Take a look at the commentary real quick. Moses and, and Aaron are, are on the side of God who is trying to prove that the God, Yahweh is the real God and there is no other God but he, right? You'll notice here an interesting parallel to Genesis, all right? God is kind of like destroying. He was in what we was created is now being destroyed. For example, the darkness wins over the light. Um, he makes the the waters foul and unsupportive of life. Remember the command was let the waters be teeming with life, filled with life, and now turns them into blood, everything dies, right? The first nine plagues are all leading up to the tenth plague, where the angel of death will visit the land of Egypt. All right. One more section, guys, just a short right here. The tenth plague. Exodus chapter eleven. On that, did you know there? Oh, we'll get there in a second. All right. The tenth plague. Let's read it together. When the Lord spoke to Moses, one more plague I will bring about I will bring upon Pharaoh and the land of Egypt. After that day, you will depart. In fact, when he finally lets you go, he will drive you away. Instruct the people that every man is to ask his neighbor and every woman her neighbor for silver and gold articles for clothing. The Lord indeed made the Egyptians well disposed towards the people, meaning that the Egyptians were willing to do it. Moses himself was very highly regarded by Pharaoh's servants and the people in the land of Egypt. Moses was loved and known by the people of Egypt, right? All of Pharaoh's servants are now turning against Pharaoh because they know they've seen all the destruction that has happened through the first nine plagues. And they say, enough! right? Let them go. Moses grew up with all these people, remember, right? So verse, uh, verse four there, Moses said, thus says the Lord, about midnight, I will go forth through Egypt. Every firstborn in the land of Egypt will die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the firstborn of the slave girl who's, who is at the hand mill, as well as the firstborn of all the animals. Then there will be loud wailing throughout the land of Egypt, eat such as never has been seen or ever will be seen again. But among the Israelites, among human beings and land animals alike, not even a dog will growl, so that you will know that the Lord distinguishes between Israel and Egypt. And all the servants of yours will then come down to me and bow down before me, saying, Leave, you and all of your followers, then I will depart. With that, he left Pharaoh's presence in hot anger. Right? All right. So now what's the warning? What's the warning? This is not, uh, there is no warning, right? So Moses is saying, um, Moses, Moses says to Pharaoh, this is exactly what's going to happen. There's nothing you can do at this point. So the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you so that my wonders, it may be, will not listen to you so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt, God's power being shown. Thus, al although Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders in Pharaoh's presence, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go to, uh, go from his land. All right, so this is the final warning. As a result, Pharaoh's heart is a heart. God sends the tenth and what will be uh, the sends the tenth plague, and what will prove to be the final plague, the death of the firstborn son. In order to save themselves from the suffering, fate, the same fate as the Egyptians, the Hebrews must carry out the Passover feast. This is this is the only one of the ten plagues that require an act of faith on the part of the Hebrews, in order that they not suffer the same fate as the Egyptians. God has proven his power to the Hebrews by the work of the first nine plagues. And now he has shown his love, loyalty, and power. He, in order, he asks now that the Hebrews respond in love by celebrating the Passover feast. All right. So we're going to see on uh, Monday exactly what happens there. But God is promising that the firstborn, Pharaoh is so stubborn, that the firstborn of every child um, and every animal in Egypt will die. Only the Egyptians will be, only the Hebrews will be saved. But they, in order, they have to show their act of faith. They have to show the love they have for God. The God had proved himself. Nine plagues. This is the power of Yahweh, the real God. Here's what you have to do. The, the blood of the lamb we'll talk about in, uh, on Monday. All right, guys. Listen, I hope you have a great weekend. All right, get your homework done. Um, and we'll pick up with this stuff on Monday. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. God bless. Bye.